All right, every single week, Lady Ada uses her powers of engineering to help you find what you need to find online. One of the best places is digikey.com. Lady Ada, what is the great search this week? Okay, this week's great search is on the topic of LCD drivers. I've never searched for an LCD driver before, and uh, I was curious. So can we go to the overhead, and I'll just quickly show this off again. So we've got these, this little seven-segment LCD. I'm driving with GPIO pins, and here's some bigger LCDs. And a lot of people, when they make a product, uh, you will go with um, an LCD display. It's a very common, very low cost, very low power uh, user interface device. Uh, it's daylight readable. Uh, you can add a backlight. Now it's readable at night. Um, but again, very inexpensive, very low cost. You can get custom segments. Uh, it's a very, very popular way to add a user interface. Like, you know, multimeters have them, calculators have them, um, stuff around your house is going to have an LCD. So. Um, chances are you're going to integrate one into your product design if you're an electrical engineer. So let's look at how to uh, find a driver for these uh, bare LCD modules where you just get the commons and the segments brought out. So let's go to the computer. And this was fun because I had to do this today because uh, I was curious. So we'll, we'll learn what I learned. So the first thing was like I had no idea what this was called. So I just tried LCD driver. Sometimes the part of the trick is knowing what to what to find. Um, so it turns out that was actually a pretty good guess because there's display drivers, there's display monitors, but this I think um, these are like for you know these are like ready to go um, dev kits and stuff for for TFTs. So this is like kind of a full thing, like you know this is a full uh, TFT driver. Uh, these are OLED drivers, but what we really want, um, and these are modules, of course, they, they do have modules. If you don't want to do the work of driving a raw display, you know, you, this is what most people think of when they think of LCDs, right? And, and we stock these. These are LCDs that have the backlight and the module and the metal plate, and they bring out the pins, and it's like the HD 77 something. You're ready to go. But um, these aren't customized. These are dot matrix. So, you know, if you want to customize it, you're going to have to do your own driver. So going back, so back to PMIC um, display drivers. So, you know, what's interesting here is that these are considered PMICs, and I kind of see why. Like, they are, in a sense, sort of power management ICs, but they're also, like, kind of not. Um, so I'll say that there's a couple different kinds of products mixed into this category. So the first thing is, uh, this is something that I'm going to want to use now, so I'm going to go with active. Um, and you know, there's, there's like, you know, a dip and there's QFN and there's like kind of some ridiculous stuff here. Um, I'm going to go with non-marketplace products. So I just see like the original components and I just want, um, LCD drivers for now because LCD is quite different than OLED or LED or vacuum fluorescent. Um, and I also only want surface mount. I don't want through hole. Okay. So when I got to here, what's interesting is there was a couple different things. So there was a mix. There was like some of these like really large pin devices mixed with some of these like, this is like a, you know, a 40 um, XX logic device. So I'll say one thing that was interesting is there was a couple of these like really like ancient devices, but they were like, you know, this was, this is like a 20 volt device. It says copyright 2003, but this was probably originally from like, you know, I don't know, the eighties or something. And these are for, you know, old LCD devices where like there was a microcomputer, but you needed something to help you drive it. Um, and this is not what we want. We want something that will actually do the scanning for us, sort of like um, seven segment LED drivers that I've got the HT16K33s, they do the multiplexing for you. And that's what I want. This is, this is not doing the multiplexing for you. This is assuming that you're going to like do all the work. So this was a little hard to um, separate out. But what I did notice is that um, first off, there's like different configuration segments. And second, the interface so this was considered like a BCD interface, because, like binary coded decimal, because there was a driver that was controlling it. 
So I want to get rid of the BCD because I don't want the I don't want that kind. I really just want like I squared C and then like SPI and serial, you know, those are fine. And then when I filtered those out, I was like, okay, you know, now now we're getting now we're getting somewhere. So these are, there's a, again, there's a couple different types. There's segments and there's dot matrix. And the one I'm talking about, like the dot matrix is of course, you know, 64 by 32 dots, but I want segments because I want like the, you know, seven segment or whatever um, designs. So what I'm gonna do is, I also don't need like 500 segments. I was like, let's do, you know, like if I have a seven segment, let's say hex segment, right? So you have 15 um, elements per. I was like, I don't really need more than like 148, 150 segments. So let's just limit us because there was definitely like massive, massive chips. I don't need a massive chip. And so then they actually kind of got very reasonable and um, the prices weren't too bad either. Like you can see that they're a couple dollars. Um, and then I was like, well, I have a lot of choices here. Uh, looks like Rome has a series. TI has a couple series. Um, this is PLCC. Not so interesting to PLCC. I was kind of like, I was getting a little spoilt for choice, to be honest. So what I decided to do is like, well, first up, let's look for stuff in stock. And then second, I want ones that are I squared C only. So I picked two wire serial, which is like another word for I squared C. Um... I picked serial also in case like it got categorized that way. And um, I sorted by price. And I actually got a couple options. So um, on semi has one chip. Um, and a lot of these are, let's see, this is serial. Let me actually look at this one. Let's look at this one. The LC75. So a lot of these are like general purpose. They can run from three to five volts, which is wonderful. Um, let's look at the usage. Okay, so this one, uh, you can see the segments in the commons are driven up here. There's an inhibit, there's an oscillator, uh, but this doesn't have I squared C. This actually has like a kind of a three pin serial. So I'm going to skip that. And then I was like, oh, let's check out this Rome one, which I kind of liked that it had, there's a couple different Rome uh, boards. Looks like they have slightly different sizes or configurations. Uh, they have a 48 segment and an uh, 80 segment. So I checked out this one. Hold on, it's like a big data sheet. It's a chunker. Let's see, I already downloaded it. And this one was actually really nice. So first off, it comes in a, in a very cute uh, QFN, 24-pin QFN. Also can run 3 or 5 volts, which is great. They have two versions, you know, 80-segment and a 48-segment. Um, no oscillator needed. has an integrated oscillator, no external components, low power consumption. And it's like, I like love this block diagram because it's like power, segment output, ground all the test pins, and I squared C, and then inside is uh, DDRAM. So it has the RAM for you, it has like a blink generator, um, and it kind of does all the work. It's very simple. I kind of like I kind of like the simplicity of, of this board. And then you just, you know, you just have to figure out in your software, you map, you know, you tell it the, um, you write to the RAM and they're like, this is the DDRAM. So you have internal RAM that's refreshed for you, you tell it which segments you want on and off by writing to the RAM over I squared C and it does everything else. It does all that multiplexing, the AC waveforms um, beautifully. So this is actually an adorable little chip. I kind of like it. And it looks like there's a couple different modes. Um, you know, if you have a chip that has built in LCD driving, great, but it could be that you don't. It could be you're like, oh, I'm stuck with this Freescale chip or this NXP or chip or, this AVR, it doesn't have built-in LCD driver. Um, so this would be a really good alternative. So this was my pick for the great search because it's in stock, it's inexpensive, it's I squared C, 
It's a QFN. It's really simple, doesn't need any external components. Um, and looks like it's a very easy chip to use and integrate if you'd like to add LCD interface. So check out the Rome BU 97 series of uh, LCD drivers. I think I might make a STEM IQT board out of this. That can be really handy if you get LCDs and you're like, I want to quickly start it up. Uh, having a breakout would be cool. That's a great search.